Hi everyone, my name is Khaim and I'm a developer advocate working on TensorFlow-Lite and in this video, we'll learn how to train and deploy machine learning models on Edge devices. We will use TensorFlow-Lite, a cross-platform framework for on-device machine learning. I'll show you how to train TensorFlow-Lite models and deploy them to mobile apps. We'll start with building a simple machine learning app with TensorFlow-Lite and then I'll show you how to make use of the pre-trained TensorFlow Lite models so that you don't have to train models by yourself. And finally, I'll show you how to easily train TensorFlow Lite models at scale with Cloud AutoML. Now let's start by building our first machine learning app. We'll do a hello world example of on-device machine learning, building an image classification model. And in this example, we we'll use a flower data set, which contains five different types of flowers, daisy, rose, sunflower, and so on. And we'll train an image classifier that can recognize these flowers. And then we'll deploy it to an Android app so that our app will be able to recognize the flowers that you are pointing the phone camera at. There are two steps required to build such an app. First, we'll use TensorFlow Lite Model Maker which is a library that allows you to train TensorFlow Lite models on your own dataset. You can train a model by just four lines of code. You start by specifying your dataset. Then you choose which model specification that you like to use. Then it will just work. The default one is already a state-of-the-art model architecture for on-device machine learning so that you can just leave it with the default option. Then after training the model, you can evaluate the model and finally export it in the TensorFlow Lite format. In on-device machine learning, you have to constantly make a trade-off between accuracy, inference speed, or model size. So that's why we want you to not just customize models for your data, but also being able to easily switch between different model architectures. As you can see in this code sample, you can easily switch in by choosing to use either ResNet or FGNet by just changing one parameter. Now let's switch to the demo and I'll show you how to train our flower classifier with model maker. We will use Google Colab to train our flower classification model We'll start by installing Model Maker. And then we import the necessary classes. And next, we'll download our Flower dataset from TensorFlow. If you look at the dataset, you will see that it contains five different types of flowers. And in each folder, there are many images of each flowers. Next, we'll split our flower dataset into training data and testing data. We'll use 90% of our flower dataset as training data and the rest as testing data to see if the model can generalize well to the new data that it has never seen before. And next, we'll train the model with the default model architecture. It will take a while to train the model. Okay, so now the model training has completed. Let's evaluate the model with the test data. You can see that the flower models is doing very well. It can recognize new flower images that it has never seen before, correctly 93% of the time. And then we'll export the model in the TensorFlow Lite format. And then we download it to our local computer.
In this example, we've trained an image classification model, but Model Maker also supports other use cases. For example, text classification and question and answers. There are new use cases such as object detection are coming soon. Once you already have a model, you can import it to Android app with just a few clicks using the Android Studio plugin. Now let's do that. We start with a skeleton Android app. We can capture a video stream from the camera, but it can't recognize anything yet. The app only shows random labels in the bottom of the screen. And we will update the app to use our Tensible Light model to recognize the flowers. Here's the Android app source code. First, we'll delete the placeholder code that show the fake labels. Then we'll import the model to Android Studio. We'll rename the model to something more descriptive, like flower classifier. Then we import it. And next, we'll add code to use the model in our app. Here what it is. We'll start with loading the model. We convert the input image into the bitmap format. Then again, convert it into tensor image, which is required by the tensor light model. Next, we fit the tensor image into the tensor light model, and then take the output sorted by probability, and then take only the top results. Finally, we convert the output of the model into a format that can be displayed on the screen. Let's see how our app works. You can see that the app now can recognize different type of flowers that the model was trained on. You can also go through the tutorial that I have shown you in details with all the sample code by following this code lab. Please check it out. Now you know how to train a TensorFlow Lite model and integrate that into an Android app. But you don't have to train a model by yourself all the time. Actually, in many cases, you can just leverage the pre-trained models and let me show you how to do that. You can go to TensorFlow Hub to download pre-trained TensorFlow Lite models. TensorFlow Hub is an open repository for TensorFlow model, just like GitHub for open source software. There you can find pre-trained models, not only from Google, but also from developers around the world. For example, there are image classification models to recognize about 1,000 types of birds, or over 2,000 types of plants, or another model to recognize more than 1,000 types of insects. There are actually many more models on other domains as well, such as text, or sound classification, or speech recognition. So please check them out on TensorFlow. Integrating those models to your Android app can be as easy as importing the models into Android Studio, just like I showed you in the demo earlier. And besides TensorFlow Lite, Google also has a product called MLKit for using machine learning on mobile. Because MLKit builds on top of TensorFlow Lite, you can use it for both Android and iOS. It provides a list of pre-trained models through easy-to-use APIs for most popular on-device machine learning use cases. The APIs are very simple so that you don't need any machine learning expertise at all in order to use them. For example, you can recognize text, detect objects, translate between languages, and many more, all on-device. Let me show you one example of an MLKit API, Object Detection and Tracking API. You can point the camera at an object, and the API will help you to detect where the object is. And here's how you use the Object Detection API. You start with creating the object detector, and then you convert the input model to the format that is required by the model. Then you run inference with the model, get back the bounding boxes of the objects in the image and the category of the object. So that's how you leverage pre-trained models on TensorFlow Hub 
and via ML Git. Next, let's talk about how you can train TensorFlow Lite model at scale with Cloud AutoML. AutoML Vision Edge is a service in Google Cloud that have you train TensorFlow Lite models without writing a single line of code. Here are the three steps that you will need to go through. First, you will need to prepare your training dataset, and then you train a model with Cloud AutoML, and finally, deploy the model into a mobile app. In the first step, you just need to upload your training data to Google Cloud using this GUI, and then you can choose some configuration to train the model. For example, you can choose to train a model with higher accuracy, but as a trade-off of a larger model size, or you can choose a small model which sacrifices some accuracy. Then after training, just download the TensorFlow Lite model and import it to your Android app using Android Studio. It was just like I showed you in the demo earlier, the model can be integrated in your app in just a few lines of code. AutoML currently supports two on-device machine learning use cases, image classification and object detection. So that was it for today and I'm looking forward to seeing what it will build with TensorFlow Lite.